G'day and welcome to my Lithium Battery Masterclass video series for 2024. In this video, part four, I'm talking about battery BMSs or battery management systems. What actually is a BMS? How does it work in your lithium battery? And how does it ensure that your lithium battery is safe, happy and healthy over a long period of time? Now in the last video, I talked about the different types of lithium iron phosphate cells that you might find within your battery. I also talked about grade A cells and the importance of brand new cells. Plus, I demonstrated that a single lithium cell has a nominal voltage of around 3.2 volts. So you need four of them in series to get that 12.8 volt nominal voltage. Well, the actual usable voltage for a lithium iron phosphate cell is between about 2.5 and 3.65 volts. Once you have four cells in series, that range is between 10 and 14.6 volts. And that's the number one reason you have a BMS, to keep your battery pack within the safe, usable range of 10 to 14.6 volts. The BMS prevents going outside of those values, so it prevents under voltage or over voltage situations that can cause trouble. A BMS is a sort of programmed little computer that is built into the battery that ensures each of the individual cells in the battery is A-OK. -okay. They monitor and check that each cell is getting the same amount of charge, they're all balanced, they're all charging and discharging correctly and at the allowed rate, and that they're within those safe operating temperatures and voltages. If a battery cell strays outside of those allowed limits, whether through a passive condition like hot ambient temperatures or by overcharging the battery higher than the allowed rate, the BMS will actually disconnect the cells from the output of the battery. That allows the cells to stop doing any work, gives them a chance to cool down, de-stress and relax. And of course, that helps to prevent any damage to the cells. But what do I mean by the allowed rate of charging? Well, a grade A cell like this has a certain allowable charging and discharging rate. In the Adventure King's 120 amp battery, it can output constant 120 amps of current. With the ultra slim battery that I have here, each cell can output 200 amps of current or up to 525 amps for a short period of up to 10 seconds. Now, of course, that's gonna put a lot of stress on the batteries. And if you were to short circuit this battery and go above that threshold, you will damage the batteries. So the BMS also has the job of preventing short circuit damage or an overcurrent situation. Once you go above the amp limit of the BMS, it again will disconnect the cells from the output, whether you're charging or discharging. So with a good quality battery with grade A cells, a good rule of thumb is to match the BMS capability with the battery capacity. So what do I mean by that? Well, the Adventure King's 120 amp hour battery is fitted with a 120 amp BMS, meaning it can discharge 120 amps constantly. On the other side here, I've got the ultra slim 100 amp hour battery. That's actually fitted with a 175 amp BMS because the cells in this battery are actually capable of 200 amps of constant current discharge. So that gives you the confidence that not only is the BMS high quality, but so are the cells. And that's true of the entire Adventure Kings range, from the 60 amp hour battery with a 60 amp BMS, right up to the 300 amp hour battery with a huge 300 amp BMS. Now, all that being said, if you do constantly run your battery right on the limit, it will create a lot of heat and you could prematurely age or degrade the battery. So if you have the need for a constant 60 amps of output, step up from the 60 amp battery to a 100 amp hour battery. In the same way, if you need a constant 100 amp discharge, possibly step up from the 100 amp hour battery to a 120 amp hour battery, just to help it out a little bit. But that said, if you do choose to run your battery right on the limit at the full constant current discharge rate, it'll still get the full cycle life out of the battery. That's because Adventure King's batteries have been rated and tested to their full cycle life at their full current discharge rate. So with the 120 amp hour battery, 
even if you discharge it at 120 amps, you'll still get 2000 cycles out of this battery. You might notice on the market, some other batteries claim many, many thousands of cycles, but you've got to ask at what current rate is that tested? If you see a battery that seemingly has a high capacity, but is paired with a lower rated BMS, they could be trying to disguise the fact that they've used lower quality or lower rated cells. That way, the BMS is actually the limiting factor and the cells never have to work hard, which is when they'd show their low quality. Alternatively, it could be that the BMS just doesn't have the functions it really should. For example, if you don't charge your lithium cells at a high rate because you've got a lower rated BMS, then there's not gonna be much heat generated and therefore, why should you add a temperature sensor? Well, the answer is it should have one for safety, so they might just be cost cutting. So let's talk temperature. In the last video, I showed a study where it proved that using your lithium battery in cooler temperatures or keeping your lithium cells cooler allowed for many more cycles. But that's not the only reason that temperature is important. Lithium cells, like lithium ion phosphate, need to be charged and discharged within a certain temperature range. Lithium ion phosphate is a lot better than other lithium batteries, but it still does have low and high thresholds. And that's where a high quality BMS will help protect you and your battery. So you wanna use your lithium ion phosphate between around five and 45 degrees Celsius. That's a healthy range. It's gonna be healthier and the battery will perform better over its entire life. A good quality BMS will prevent your lithium ion phosphate battery charging below zero degrees Celsius and above about 50 degrees Celsius. If you do try and force charge a lithium ion phosphate battery outside of this temperature range, you could cause internal damage. What actually happens is the lithium ion recombines with the electron to form lithium metal. And just like you might have gold plated or silver plated jewelry, you end up with lithium plated electrodes internally. Now at best, that lithium plating reduces the battery's capacity or could increase internal resistance, meaning your battery is not as effective at outputting power. At worst, as the lithium continues plating, it could cause an internal short circuit and permanently damage your battery. While you're discharging your lithium ion phosphate battery, below about zero degrees, you might see a little bit of temporary capacity loss, but it's not until about negative 20 that you could possibly be doing any damage. Now, it's very rare we'd see those sort of temperatures in Australia, but if you are overseas in cooler climates, you could look into heated lithium batteries that incorporate a small heater to ensure that the cells are warm enough to accept a charge or be discharged. Last but not least, another really important point is to keep your lithium battery between the usable and safe range of 10 volts to 14.6 volts. So let's take a look at a graph of why that's so important. The interesting thing about lithium iron phosphate batteries is that they have a very flat discharge curve between about 80% full and 20% full. So to prevent you getting caught out and accidentally over discharging your battery, the BMS will sense each individual cell voltage and disconnect the battery output if any cell drops below a set threshold, usually set at around 2.5 volts. It'll also disconnect if the overall battery voltage drops below 10 volts. In the same way, lithium ion phosphate has a very interesting charging curve with the last 1% of capacity requiring a significant voltage jump from around 13.6 volts to 14.6 volts. So in the final critical stage of charging, the BMS will protect from overcharging either from cell to cell or as a whole. It's usually set above 14.6 volts for protection. A charger with a good lithium iron phosphate specific charging profile should not exceed this value, but the BMS is a great second layer of defense. The BMS will also aim to balance the individual cells during charging once a set threshold has been reached usually when the battery is above around 14 volts or getting very close to 100% capacity. This help extends the life of the battery and prevents imbalanced cells that could cause the BMS to shut down unnecessarily, helping your whole system run smoother. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed my lithium battery masterclass videos. Of course, there's so much more to talk about regarding battery BMSs and of course, lithium batteries in general. So if you're interested, keep an eye out for the next video where I'm gonna be sitting down with our lead electrical engineer in our product and R&D department. We're gonna tear down some batteries, show you behind the scenes in-house testing procedures and have a chat about exactly what goes into an Adventure King's lithium battery.